Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half RPOD 192 travel trailer. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you around the inside of the RV, and we're going to come back to the outside of the RV, show you all about everything. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside the new R-Pod 192 here. We're looking toward the front of the RV, as you've seen on the floor plan that was up there a few seconds ago. This is a Murphy bed non-slide out unit. And looking up here in the front, I have the sofa in sofa mode. Now this sofa does have some storage underneath of it. You can see pop up there, which you can get to by raising the sofa or through the little nets in the front. The sofa will then flip down all the way, you can see here. And then the queen size bed will actually fold down out of the wall, which you can see there as well. Nice little setup, gives you extra room in here, being this is a small camper, it allows you to have a couch and still get a small dinette as well, along with a larger bed. Now on the side of the bed area there, there's a little bit of storage underneath of both little end tables. Hanging closet on both sides of the bed as well. And the one on the left does have the light switch for the backlit lighting in those uh, closet areas there. USB charger ports and electric outlets on both sides also. Now, when you do put this thing in and out of bed mode, it's real simple to do. There's just a little latch right there. So we're gonna set this down and just kind of show you what this actually looks like when you're doing this here. Hopefully the camera's not too shaky for you guys. Uh, but basically all you gotta do, the sofa goes down just like this. You got a little latch pull right here and the bed comes right on down. So real simple process. When you want to put it back up, just pushes back and latches in, and then flips right on back up. So easy to do, and again, gives you extra room in here so you can have a sofa and a walk around style bed. All right, now we're going to spin back around here and kind of look toward the back section of the RV here. So now you got the little kitchen area. You have a little bit of overhead cabinet space up above. You have a hood range and light fan there. Two burner stove top with the glass lid. The lid when it's in up mode there does act as kind of a backsplash. Large single bowl sink with high rise faucet. On the side of the cabinet down there you do have a uh, electric outlet, but you also have your modern panel, which has your holding tanks meter on it, has your battery meter on it, also has the gas switch for the water heater, and the water pump switch on it as well. The electric switch, because this is a gas and electric water heater, the electric switch is outside. You have the convection microwave down there, so you can cook or bake either one. Right below that is the propane leak detector as well. And then you do have some storage underneath the sink. Now on the side of the dinette down here, you can see pop up. There's some storage down there. A great place to kind of kick your shoes off or something. And then you have your little pet friendly bowls. Now you have the six cubic foot gas and electric Dometic refrigerator you can see. Uh, decent sized fridge, again it does work on propane or electricity, so for you boondock campers and stuff, you seem to really love those gas fridges, so that is what they use. Um, just below that is the central vac or dustpan vac. Basically it's a road vac and you can buy the hose for it aftermarket through them if you want but there's no carpet or anything in here so they just set it up so that you could take a broom and sweep everything right into the dustpan vac down there you have your electric box with your breakers and fuses down there and then over on the left side of the fridge is a nice size little pantry or laundry area whatever you want to use it for but mainly pantry because this one does have a big uh, closet area in the bathroom and just below that is also a 
furnace. So you do have a propane furnace in the RV as well. Spinning over to the other side, you have on the side of the cabinet there is the awning in and out button, your awning light button, an interior light switch, um, and your porch light switch. You got a few switches on the side of the cabinet. And then also it's pre-wired for roof mount solar. And that actually is wired right there toward that side of the cabinet. That's where they want you to put the control box if you do do that or if they do it when you order it that way. You can also see up top here the Coleman air conditioner. Nice air conditioner for the RV. This is the same air conditioner they use on 30 foot trailers. So having it in a little 20 foot trailer is definitely uh, going to help keep you cold as well. The 28 inch 12 volt LED TV. Really like that again more for those boondock campers. It is 12 volt powered. So if you stop off the side of the road somewhere, rest area, Walmart parking lot, whatever, you can fire up that TV off your battery power and actually kind of watch some TV catch up on the local news. Booth dinette here does fold down, makes into a small bed. So if you do have a guest, that would be a great place for them to sleep if it's like a small grandchild or something. And again, overhead cabinets up there. You also have the uh, IRV radio over there on the side. You have two indoor speakers and two outdoor speakers as well. Going on back here to the back, we're going to pop up some pictures of this bathroom so you can see this a little bit better. But you do have a little corner shower. Does have the skylight up in there, a little pull across curtain. There's also a large turbo exhaust fan in here to help suck out all that moisture. And then kind of panning down this side, you have a pretty good sized little closet area right here. And your foot flush toilet, along with a little bit of storage underneath the sink. So a pretty big bathroom. And then the door here is a sliding pocket door to close that off. Again, guys, thank you for checking out my videos. We're going to try and get you more up-to-dated videos on these RVs as they roll in. All these mid-year model changes coming. Every manufacturer does their changes this time of year. So again, trying to get you all updated with everything new. That's why my videos kind of slowed down a little bit. No sense in video and a bunch of old obsolete stuff when all this new stuff is getting ready to hit the market. So again, touching you up here and uh, we'll be back. All right, guys, we're back on the outside of this new R Pod 192 trailer here. We're going to start here in the front section and work our way around. As you can obviously see on the outside, new exterior color and graphics. This model has the windshield right over the front section there. Lower diamond plate metal across the front section. You have a power hitch jack here with a built-in LED light and manual override in case of an electronic failure. Single 20 pound propane tank with the hard bottle cover. There's room for one or two batteries to go in behind there on that rack. Now it will come with one deep cycle interstate battery when you purchase from Couches RV Nation. You can opt in for a second one if you want. They come with zero batteries from the RV manufacturer. So wherever you purchase from, do make sure you get at least one battery. You need one battery to at least operate the breakaway cable and a few of the items on the RV. The little red box down there is the battery disconnect. And that basically allows you to shut on and off the battery when you're storing it so that the battery doesn't slowly drain from items in the camper drawing power from it. Standard safety chains, two inch hitch ball. Again, this is a single axle model, so you have a smaller ball. The larger like 202 model, which is dual axle, will have the two and five sixteenths ball. But all the single axles are two inch hitch ball. Right there coming out the side of the V part of the frame is a quick disconnect gas hose you can see running over to the Suburban griddle right here. And that's a nice feature to have. You can do some of your cooking and stuff out here on a nice day. 
It also has a little dump sink area and the little blue spray port as well. The baggage door is held up by magnetic clips. So when you do open and close that, there's no plastic latch to break or dry rot off kind of thing. Uh, it just has a magnetic holder on it. You can see all new graphics on the side over here. You got the new little frog guy there. Looks like he's eating some bees, chilling out there, leaning up against the tree. There's a little honeycomb effect, kind of breaking up the difference between the lower gray fiberglass and the upper white fiberglass. Double entrance step going in and out of the coach. Power awning. The power awning on the 192 is standard. It's a forced feature. Um, I do get that question often because the small ones have a choice of an awning or a dome. On the larger models, you only have this awning as a standard. They don't offer a dome on the larger models. The awning is power again, so you can push a button, it goes in and out. You can manually override it in case of an electronic failure in this upper head right here. The awning also is tiltable for water runoff. Uh, the arms actually come down so you can adjust it depending on which way you need that water to run on a rainy day. New entry door as well. This is a black entry door, but this is actually a tempered glass door. So it actually does have a window in it, even though it doesn't look like it normally during the day. But this is a windowed area right here. Large folding entry handle. You have two exterior speakers outside there above the window. Huge window, again, deep tent safety glass windows there, and a big window just kind of overlooking your campsite area. Next to your entry door handle there on the side, you will see your model number. That's where they usually locate all the model numbers on RVs when you're walking around a dealer's lot and kind of looking at different RVs, kind of remember that number if you go back in and want to talk to your salesperson about a specific model, that's what he's going to need to know what model you're looking at, branded model. And also there is a Asdale on board sticker there, just kind of reassuring you that this unit was built with Asdale composite sidewalls. That basically means is the side of the fiberglass, that white and gray material, is attached to an, a Asdale composite material instead of an eighth inch wood lou on board. So it's much less likely to have any delamination issues from water damage as Asdale doesn't rot or mold and mildew like wood would. So that is a huge improvement to RV sidewall construction on fiberglass. Down below next to the step is the pre, uh, pet friendly leash hook down there on the frame you'll see pop up. So if you do have a dog or something that you want to leash up and let them outside, you can do so. Just behind the axle there is a outdoor electric outlet as well, so you can plug some stuff in out here. And just behind the awning arm is the black tank flush to flush out the toilet system of the RV. Coming on around to the back side of the camper here, you have your traditional four inch square tube RV bumper and a lot of people store a dump hose inside of there. You could do a small like maybe one or two bike rack thing on the back if you wanted to move the spare tire over some, but you got to be real cautious on weight. These bumpers aren't meant to hold more than a few hundred pounds of weight. Ladder back here basically to help you get up and down on the roof up there so it is a full walk on roof you can get up and down there walk around do your maintenance kind of check on things this is a tough ply roof which does have a 15 year material warranty on it which is a little better than the old style uh, rubber roofs which only have a 12 so you got a little bit longer material warranty but you still have to get up there and maintain those seams where they cut holes in it and everything they use what's called a die core sealant up there and over time that will crack open kind of like caulking it's not caulking but it's kind of reminds you of you know caulking the outside of your house or you know a trailer whatever you might have but you do have to get up there and maintain that stuff that's where a lot of people fail to do things like that and their water 
you know, campers get water damage and stuff inside of them. So be real cautious on that type of stuff. I always checked mine, you know, four times a year. I checked it with the change of seasons. Never usually had to do anything, but every few years, but you know, just trying to be cautious just remember, you know, first day of summer, spring, winter, fall, whatever, go out there and inspect your RV. It will make it last a lot longer for you guys. Um, LED taillights and running lights. The unit is also pre-wired for a backup camera right above that window there. So if you want to do an observation or backup camera, uh, it's pre-wired and set up for Furion. That's the brand that everybody's been kind of using. But uh, really nice feature. Talk with your sales guy about that. Again, observation camera, much nicer. That will allow you to see behind you when you are driving down the road. Uh, the black square on the right is your water heater, six gallon gas and electric water heater over there. The electric switch is in the lower left corner and then your drain plug in the center that you've seen pop up on that picture there. Now coming around to this side of the RV, down below here is gonna be your dump area. So your gray and black tank both dump out of one tube right here. It's a little different than some of the other models which have to have split tubes. But uh, this one all comes out of one. Just to the right of that is the hot and cold low point water drains as well for draining out the water when you go to store it. And also just for winterization purposes. Electric outlet plugs in right here along with your cable inlet as well. And then you have outside, uh, the uh, furnace exhaust right there and the outside maintenance access panel here for the gas electric refrigerator. Now up top, you can kind of see up here, we'll get back a little bit further. There's the skylight up there. You can also see the other black thing up there, the little round small one. Those are plumbing stack vents. You can also see the refrigerator exhaust vent up there, which again is letting all that heat to go out the top. And then you can see your air conditioner up there in the center as well. Stove exhaust comes right out the side, just to the right of that window there. You do have to open that up so that the smoke and stuff can blow right on out. Now up here is where your fresh water tank fill is. So you fill up your fresh water tank right here or hook to city water. And then directly below that is the fresh water tank drain to drain that out. To the left there on the corner is a the storage door basically for the access panel right there. Again, that storage door flips up, connects to the magnetic connector, but you do have storage across the front right there. Now the unit also has a fully enclosed underbelly that you can see pop up there. You have four stabilizer jacks on all four corners. They're heavy duty scissor jacks. And also the unit has a torsion flex axle. Really, really nice upgraded axle suspension system. You'll find that on all the R-Pod models. They even do it on the uh, no boundaries models that Forest River does. Uh, just a nicer, higher quality axle system makes each wheel more independent. So as it bounces up and down the road, it absorbs some of that stress instead of transferring it all to the RV. But overall, really cool little unit, great little couples coach to hook to, travel around, lightweight, a lot of small SUVs can pull this thing. But we're gonna pop up your weight stickers for you here. So you're going to see your gross vehicle weight sticker pop up, which talks about your, obviously your gross weight, the production date, serial numbers, has the uh, axle information on it as well. You're going to see next your unloaded vehicle weight, which basically has your serial number on it, along with what the camper actually weighed when it rolled off the assembly line. Next is your cargo carrying capacity sticker. Again, just kind of telling you how much cargo you can load into the RV. And the next sticker is your tire sticker, which again, basically just kind of telling you your proper tire pressure and tire size, um, and basically what's supposed to be on the RV. Again, guys, thank you very much for checking out my videos. We're gonna have more updated new mid-year model change videos coming. A lot of these manufacturers have been a little slow on getting this all done due to a lot of shortages in the RV industry, unfortunately. 
Uh, this COVID-19 stuff has really, really put a strain on getting some of these supplies and parts and even just building things. A lot of dealers are sold out of these RVs and taking orders. I know this company here actually has almost a thousand already sold deposits on campers. They got a couple thousand units on order and already half of them have sold out. People just waiting, you know, two, three, four months to get their RVs um, at these low wholesale cheap prices. So talk with the sales guys there at Couches RV Nation guys. They'll definitely save you guys a ton of money. Really, really again, appreciate you checking out my videos. More to come soon.